job back! Yeah, that's right. I finally decided to get out of my depression, stop moping, and accept the fact that, uh, shit got banned, yo. I mean, that's just the way it is. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, I still think that their last ban list was a little excessive. But, um, we'll see what Konami has to say about it. And, you know, they, they still have, what, five days to change their mind before I, you know, have to do anything to their houses involving flaming bags of dog poop. But anyway, so um, this is not what I wanted to show you. So you know how I was telling you about in the last video how Slifer Agents, Agent Exodia, they're essentially dead, right? Well, I kind of, you know, put my thinking cap on like I normally do when I'm cornered. And I decided that I actually can make it possible to where they will keep on living. So, believe it or not, Exodia is back. And so is Slifer, technically. So remember last time that in my Slifer Agent deck, I had, um, what was it, Monster Reborn, Heavy Storm, and Pot of Avarice. So I was running those three cards, and they all three got hit on the ban list. I was also running uh, Card Destruction, but obviously Card Destruction is easy to replace. And the only card, uh, of course, I was running Card Destruction, Pot of Avarice, and Agent Exodia as well. But, I can obviously find something to replace Card Destruction. It was mainly Pot of Avarice that I was having trouble with. But, I found a way around it, and it used to be that Slifer Agents was a lot easier to do than Agent Exodia. Now it's the other way around. Agent Exodia is a lot more consistent than Slifer Agents. But, nevertheless, I mean, Slifer Agents is pretty damn good. So, um, I really like it. I've won a few matches with it. I've only lost once, really. And that's just because I started off with a really crappy hand. But the main thing about these decks is uh, blocking. So like Nova Summoner, Honest, uh, Agent of Creation Venus getting out your uh, Mystic Shine Balls for your Gachi Gachis. And then of course Marshmallow to essentially stall until you get Tethius to your hand. Because once Tethius gets to your hand, if you have at least one spell card, then you're pretty well hopefully going to be successful if it's something like a Reload or Mallet. Sometimes, uh, if it's like a hand destruction or an end of the void, you're going to run into some problems. But, let me actually show you some example duels later on. So, what did I take out? What did I put in? That's a very good question. So, notice that Earth is back to three, but I still only run two of them. And, um, that's mainly because that's just a choice of mine. I really don't care. Actually, what you might, what I might end up doing is taking out the Jupiter and putting in a third Earth. Because Earth is extremely good for being able to summon Black Rose. Since I don't have Heavy Storm anymore, to clear that back row, I normally use Black Rose, and I think I'll show you in a couple duels where I summon Black Rose to clear the field entirely. Because Master Hyperion only being able to destroy one card at a time, that is very slow. Especially when they have four back row, and I still have to clear out monsters also. So Black Rose is the girl for the job, and Earth is the way to do it, because she's the tuner. But what did I take out? I took out four cards, right? Monster Reborn, Heavy Storm, Card Destruction, Pot of Avarice. What four cards did I put in? I put in three Into the Voids and one no uh, Double Summon. So Double Summon is the way that you're going to actually be able to summon Slifer. Now that means don't hand destruct Slifer anymore. Obviously, you have to keep him in your hand. And Pot of Avarice isn't a way to put him back either, so you have to make sure you don't hand destruct him at all times. Um. So that's how to summon Slifer. Like you summon Tethius and then you summon two Hyperions, double summon, summon Slifer, whatever. Now, Into the Void, the reason why Into the Void is actually quite good is because it is not a neg one. It, it is a plus zero, and it's really good because if you draw into it and then you activate it, it's sort of like the One Day of Peace, where if you activate it and you draw a fairy, then Tethius' effect goes off again, which is really nice, really swell. It's really good for Exodia since you can't hand destruct pieces of Exodia, and I'll show you what the side deck for that looks like. But first, let me show you a few of the Slifer Agent duels, since most people are keen to running Slifer Agents over Agent Exodia for some reason. But um, I really like it. There's only a 9 card difference now instead of a 10 card difference. Uh, mainly because, you know, some cards got hit and now I have to work with this. But it's really good. So uh, I think you'll like it and let me actually get into the duel, shall we? So I'm really excited that I have been able to keep it working. I mean, usually whenever it looks like, you know, the, the end is in the end is in sight and it's looking really grim. I always find a way to, you know, always manage to find a way 
to bring it back, you know, for one last go around. Uh, Dragon Exodia, actually, there's no salvage in that because Super Juke did get banned. But Agent Exodia, it's still possible. So let me show you uh, the first Slifer Agents game that I had. And this was just, I was testing the new deck that I was deciding to run against Jarvis to see whether or not it was any good. And it turns out it was pretty good. So first of all, oh yeah, first of all, always evaluate your hand. So I've got Venus. So first things I'm going to do, of course, is, you know, go into Gachi Gachi. Set up some blocking, set up some stall, whatever. Um, however, Jarvis is still running. He is still running the old version. Like, obviously, because he's running... Uh, he's running 3D prisons, and he's running, uh, where is it, Heavy Storm? There he is, and he's still running Heavy Storm, so, obviously he's cheating, but you know what, it doesn't really matter. So, um, yeah. And then, of course, he attacks, but the reason why Jarvis attacks a higher defense monster is because Jarvis isn't smart enough to look at, oh, he raised his defense to 2200. He used to be 1800. He only looks at what the card text says in terms of defense, so, yeah. You have to be patient with Jarvis in that case. But yeah, so I tried speeding up the, um, trying to draw into Tethius. Of course, that didn't really work. So now he's like doing all this crap, attacking with all this crap. I'm just like, oh my gosh, Jarvis, you're just whittling down your life points right now for me. So, um, yeah. And of course, you've got Double Summon right there, which is really good because Double Summon and Slifer are the two dead cards that you're always going to draw into. Like, I mean... Magical Mallet, Reload, all those other spells, you can actually do something with them. But um, Double Summon and Slifer, really, you can't do anything. So anyway, so as you can see, I started off Tethys' effect. I'm drawn into a whole bunch of cards. At this point, you can clearly see that you're going to win the duel. Why? You've got, what, seven cards in your hand and two reloads? Good chance is that it's going to be very hard to stop you unless you just get the most unlucky draw after you activate the next reload. So let's just go ahead and skip through this and keep on drawing and keep on drawing. And you'll notice that at this point, you don't need to activate Hyperion's effect to um, destroy any of his monsters because obviously Slifer would be powerful enough to get over any of them. So just keep that in mind as well. Also, if you're... If you've got double summon in your hand at a point like this, you might as well activate it because there's no way that you're going to put it back with reload. Because that would just be foolish. Because you might as well activate it now. Uh, and this will actually give you a chance to actually see what Into the Void does. Well, you know, once I stop drawing fairies. But, okay, here we go. Into the Void, right? I draw, and I drew into a fairy. Look at that. Oh, I get to keep on going. Sort of like one day of peace. Except, I'm sorry, Goblin does not allow you to keep on drawing because it misses the timing. Or because Tethius' effect misses the timing. So, uh, activate that. Activate another end of the void. Oh, look at that. Keep on drawing. So I'm just pumping up Slifer's attack. Uh, really, all I'm looking for is a second Hyperion. Because I need... I only had one in my hand. And I needed... I should have actually summoned the first one. But whatever. And now I've got the two Hyperions that I'm looking for. So what do I do? All I have to do is summon both of them and then sack all three monsters that are on the field so I can summon Slifer, of course I go ahead and activate their effects for shits and giggles but whatever um, oh yeah and I drew all of my cards just because I wanted to pump up Slifer's attack so much Draw, uh, summon, attack, 17100 and that should be game Yep. so that's how you do it, right? so it's still very 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 possible to do this it's just going to be, um, you have to be a little more cautious. And of course, the hardest part of every single Agents deck like this is getting Tethius to your hand in record timing. You know, really, that's the only card. Oh, God. That's really the only card that you are just like, oh, man, when am I going to get this? That's the reason why you have to sit on blockers like Nova Summoner or Marshmallow or Gachi Gachi, and that's the reason why I have them. So, okay, so that was the first Slifer Agents. Um, then I've also got uh, this weird one, which I didn't win with Slifer. But this guy kind of forced me to not be able to win with Slifer. So instead, I just wanted to show you that even if you draw into, like, really bad hands, obviously this is a pretty, pretty shitty hand, but um, I still managed to make it work. And the deck doesn't always win with Slifer, but it still wins, which is, you know, a good thing. 
so um, I've only lost once with this deck, and I literally wasn't able to do anything with it. But it's okay, you know. You're not going to win all of them. That, that that's just a fact of life. So this guy ends up playing a, like a lot of back row. So I end up um, thankfully drawn into a mystery of Earth, and um, just essentially summoning her and clearing out the back row. So not not this turn, but next turn. Because he played down a Dark Blob, and I'm like, oh my gosh, Hyperion's not going to be able to handle that. So summon another Mystic Shine Ball, and Gotcha Gotcha stays on the field, so that's always good. Oh, you're going to destroy that, are you? Pfft, doesn't matter. So next turn I can sack Gotcha Gotcha, which is good. Um, yeah, for Tethius. And then activate Into the Void. However, I aren't, I'm not able to activate the Hand Destruction, because he doesn't have two cards in his hand. So I end up having to whittle down his um, attack points, or his life points, the old-fashioned way. And I did actually have to discard my entire hand. That's one of the downsides to End the Void. But normally, I don't end up like with really shitty hands. Normally, my opponent has at least two cards in their hand, and I'm able to activate Hand Destruction. But I'm showing you it's still possible to win. I don't know why he chose Needleworm. Obviously, I'm just going to destroy it with Hyperion next turn. And... Um, that's exactly what I do. Flip up, attack, and of course that's game, because you can probably do the math. Uh, between between Tethius and Hyperion alone, that was 5100, so... That's it, um, pretty much. Now, for an actual... Now, this one was uh, against an actual person summoning Slifer. He was running Dragons, and a really shitty Dragons deck indeed, because... I don't know. Well, obviously he's trying to run those level monsters, but if man, you're just your deck is just too combobulated. Uh, so yeah, he went first, of course, and it was kind of slow. That's the reason why I put slow Slifer agents because I was waiting on Tethius essentially. But I'll go ahead and show you going to Gachi Gachi, of course. Thankfully, I drew double summon now, so that way I don't draw it later on and just like stop my hand. But um, notice that with this card, this equip spell, the dragon can't be destroyed by card effects or by battle, but no battle damage is done. So if he attacks Venus, then I take no battle damage, so it doesn't matter anyway. So I don't know why he even activated Dragon's Rage, because I take no damage from any of it. But it doesn't matter, and I just drew in the Slifer, another dead card. Those are the two dead cards that you're going to draw into. So whatever. He draws Queen Dragon Dijin and um, attacks... So I take 200 damage from that. But at this point, I'm like, oh crap, I need to do something. So thankfully, I um, draw into Tethius right here. But I'm not... Oh, okay. Well, apparently I am. But yeah, I forgot. Uh, he can't be destroyed, so I have to wait on destroying him next turn. But the thing is, I had to summon Tethius this turn because obviously I have no spells in my hand. So I'm hoping that next draw phase, I'm actually going to be able to set off her effect and start drawing again. And I don't worry, I will get rid of this monster with um, Hyperion because um, of his ability to destroy stuff. So now Gachi Gachi is still on the field. And of course, that got stopped right there. So that kind of blows. But um, I, I will down his life points some, and then of course he sets his Arm Dragon level 3 because that's all he can do. Draw, and eventually I draw into a spell. Hella freaking Luya. Keep on drawing. Into the Void, really nice. Um, Keep on drawing, keep on drawing. Essentially, I only need that one Hyperion on the field. I don't need any more Hyperions. So I just keep on drawing until I can't draw no mo. And then I summon Slifer. Because I haven't used my normal summon this turn either, remember? So, attack for 16,000. Blam. <laughs> Get raped. Fuck it! So, yeah. That was pretty good, right? Uh, what, what time am I at right now? 14 minutes? Okay, I have enough time to show you the side deck of... Uh, Agent Exodia, and then I'll show you the duels of Agent Exodia. Agent Exodia, man! Okay, here we go. So here's what you're going to do, right? Extra Dex remains exactly the same. You're just going to have to take out Double Summon, obviously Slifer. Um, take out the Hand Destructions, because I don't want to be tempted in Hand Destruction, the pieces of Exodia. Whoops. What just happened? Okay, there you go. Oh, one day of peace. Put in, obviously, the pieces of Exodia. What am I going to take out? Well, I don't need these... Um, agent monsters anymore to summon or to like banish to summon Hyperion so there's no really point in having them and of course I don't need Honest because I'm not going to be doing any attacking so I start out with 9 cards in my side deck I end with 9 cards in my side deck sort, save, 
move on to the duel. So here's the reason why. This card I've explained before is really good. You're not going to battle and you're not going to special summon high carry on. So you might as well have three cards from the sky because you can banish any light fairy monster from your hand to keep drawing two cards, which is really good. You go plus zero, not neg one. One day of peace, it's like into the void. You draw. First of all, you take no damage, which is really good in case you haven't got Tethys yet. But also, it keeps her effect going. Uh, into the void versus hand destruction, because hand destruction, I can't put pieces of Exodia in the grave, and I don't really want to put fairies in the grave, because I want to put them back with Mallet and Reload to keep on drawing them. So instead, I've got Into the Void, which chances are, if I've got like six cards in my hand and an Into the Void and another spell, chances are that the Into the Void is not even going to matter. It's second effect uh, during the end phase. I discard them, because I'm going to win that turn anyway. So it doesn't matter. And now I'll actually get to show you what it looks like in action. Oh, yeah. So, first things first, Agent Exodia 1. Uh, wow, only have one Agent Exodia, but that's all it takes, because I actually did duel against a guy who apparently wasn't that intelligent, because, well, you'll see. So I don't really have anything, so all I can do is set Mystic Shine Ball, and here's the reason why this guy isn't very intelligent. Look what he does. Okay, he normal summons that, special summons that. Now, what he could have done was gone into a rank 8, but he didn't. Instead, look what he does. He attacks with 100 attack? Are you blind? Like, seriously, that's just crazy. But anyway, doesn't matter, so I draw. Um, honestly, I don't know what I'd do at this point. Probably trade in or something, because I don't need Hyperions. The reason why I've got the Hyperion still is because I do have three Splendid Venuses, three Hyperions for my two trade-ins. That's the only reason why I still have Hyperion. Because trade-in is absolutely necessary now, since uh, things like Card Destruction or Pot of Avarice are gone and I can't do extra drawing. So I'll need every single possible draw card possible. Wow, that's redundant. But you know what I mean. Also, Splendid Venus can still be cards from the sky, although I tried to save her and Hyperion for the trade-ins. But I only have two trade so I've only got one more that I'm looking for. So now I summon Tethius, activate cards from the sky, banish uh, Venus, draw two cards. Unfortunately, I didn't draw anyone, but that's okay. In the void. And that actually kind of sucks right there, too. But I activate Mallet, put back three cards, draw. Thankfully, one of them is a fairy. Now that kicks off her effect. There we go. Fairy again. Because I drew a bunch of spells from that Mallet, so chances are I'm going to draw a bunch of fairies. One day of peace. Oh, look at that. I get to keep on going. Isn't that just so lovely? Into the void. What's that? Oh, I get to keep on going. Isn't that just so lovely? So, yeah. I'm going to try to stop saying lovely now. But uh, now I can mallet again afterwards and uh, hold on to my reload and my mallet, actually. So, always try to activate your mallets first. Now. Uh, and I held on to a high period on just in case if I drew into a trade in. You know? Because obviously I put back more than enough fairies to draw into a couple more fairies. Uh, banish another fairy, draw two more cards, well that's really good. Uh, activate another card from the sky. Oh, look at that, I can keep on drawing. Uh, into the void, and I think the next card that's not a fairy that I draw is a piece of Exodia. So I should be alright. Uh, no fear. No fear. I will win. I will win. Oh, no, 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 trade in. Okay, there we go. Obviously, the piece of Exodia was one of the last two cards. And, what's that? GAME! So you can still do it, people. Don't worry. Exodia is not dead. I refuse to let him die. Like, as much as Konami beats me down every single ban list, I refuse to let this guy go down. Because Exodia is my favorite monster. It's, I'm not going to tell you the rest, but yeah. Um, he's really good. He's still possible. And if you want to see what the deck looks like just one last time, I'll, I'll show you. So. I think I'll I'll go ahead and put a, um, a a deck list in this video for what the Slifer Agents is, and then I'll put what the side deck is for Agent Exodia. And hopefully, people don't ask me in future videos when I decide to do an update on this deck what the deck list is because it's in this video. So just look at that. And hopefully, you thought this was cool. It, it was really nice to be able to uh, revive this deck because I was really down in the dumps. But yeah, anyway, so Lava Blazer is actually working out quite fine as well. Sorry, Tribunities, um, even with the ban list hit. So pretty much what I do is I take out Monster Reborn and Heavy Storm and put in two Malevolent Catastrophes because that's probably the smartest thing to do. 
And next time, I'm going to actually bring you my Gem Knights deck, because despite the fact that Rescue Rabbit got hit to one, I've still actually been able to make it work quite well. And it's really, really good, because Gaia Power. Um, because a lot of the Gem Knights are kind of weak, so Gaia Power is really good for that. But I'll show you Gem Knights next time, because I know there was, uh, there was a dude that was asking about me making a Gem Knight deck, and I said, oh, I really don't like Gem Knights that much. But ever since I discovered Gaia Power, which was like two weeks ago, I was really into Gem Knights, especially Lava of a Chain. He is just so freaking good. Oh my gosh, he is so good in this deck. Like, he's not that good in any other deck except for Octi, but in this deck, he is amazing. So anyway, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, it wasn't that long of a video, thankfully. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you all later in future videos, and goodbye.